Hi, I'm Ed Stanger, and you're listening to Two Guys Talking Rush. Two guys, two guys are talking rush. Two, 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 two guys, two guys are talking rush. Two guys are talking rush. Two, two guys, two guys are talking rush. Rush, rush, two guys. And now, get ready for the Two Guys Talking Rush podcast with your hosts, John Kane and Dan Buxman. Hey folks, my name is John Kane and this is the delightful Dan Buxman and welcome to episode 33 of the Two Guys Talking Rush podcast. This is not Two Guys Talking Vicky Lawrence. It is not. It's two guys talking the incredibly iconic Rush. So listen in, folks, and discover the best damn Rush podcast in the entire Solar Federation. Two guys talking Rush. Dan! Yes. <laughs> what up? is happening? So much. So, Dan, you were just telling me how hot it is in your apartment. It's hot in my apartment, yes. Uh, and it's March, and it's hot in my apartment. And I will never get over it, and I will complain about it forever. <laughs> There's nothing worse than being hot. Like really uh, uncomfortably hot. Especially when you're not in control of it. You as a new homeowner yeah. will get to enjoy controlling the heat, doing what you want with it whenever the mood strikes you. Yeah. We rent, so we are powerless to say anything about it. I, I think it's just on a timer or yeah. something. I don't know. Yeah. I've also, worked, some, I mean, go ahead, what? Oh, no, and just also sometimes during the winter, there's no heat. So yeah, I was gonna say it's inconsistent. Well, I you know I've rented all my life, and I don't know if there was ever a time where I didn't have control of the heat. Um, even well, I guess there were times where I didn't have the control of the heat, as you say, where it just didn't come on. You know, so yeah. um, I was like maybe, maybe I well, know. you know, but why you know why should that be a problem? You just live in New England. <laughs> yeah, I know, right, right. Um, well, anyway, I hope it cools down for you, man. Do you have a nice fan? Uh, yeah, but it's not enough and it's, it's okay, man. The show goes on. We can, get, okay. we can get you a rush fan to come over and fan you. Oh, like a, like a slave during, you know, the ancient Roman the, times. Like, yeah, like an Egyptian. With, with uh, a, yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. I'm all for that. <laughs> Are there any rush fans out there that will fan Dan? That want to serve? Or, <laughs> are there any that just live to serve? Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. We'll oh, call my. them an intern, you know? <laughs> exactly yes yeah. we need interns to fan us to fan uh, us yes well dan another uh, incredible episode we hope uh it's been it's been a while since we've connected we've uh i've i've moved into a new home i, I haven't uh, been as attentive to the podcast because of other things um but uh and that took it took its toll on my old lazy body i can't i just can't move around like i used to and i'm and i literally blew almost blew out another knee uh carrying records is it worth it yes it is yes <laughs> yes it's worth it you don't blow out, well you don't blow out your knees carrying tapes no you don't um yeah. but i'll i just i or look CDs. behind you I, yeah. I feel sympathy for you but i look behind you i see all those records neatly filed on the shelf and it's like that's it that's how you know you've moved in I need, yes. I need that. I need to see something like some shelf of my belongings proudly displayed. Yeah. yeah. Or I don't really live there. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a shelf of, of proud belongings that you have? Uh, it's it's literally one shelf now. All okay. my I got those Led Zeppelin boxes. Yeah. From a few years ago. Yeah. All the all the King Crimson boxes. Yep. Uh, and this Rolling Stones book that normally costs like $900. That's about Altamont uh, that I scored for a hundred dollars. Nice. That's it. That's my, that's my prized possession shelf. Nice. Uh, mostly though, I've tried to divest myself of things like that. So I, I don't want, yeah, I don't know. I feel like you get sort of hung up on your possessions I know. I definitely and do. it becomes more like with music, it becomes more about looking at the spine 
yeah than about actually taking the thing down and playing it it's true and i want i i want to get out of it yeah i also just don't have the money to buy this stuff anymore so. i know and they're getting harder to find and more expensive yes, they so are true mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well uh it's it's good to be with you and it's good to be with all of our rush fans and friends that uh that listen to us each week and we thank thank you for yeah. that yeah we really appreciate the support uh episode 33 who who would have thunk that we were going to reach this level of podcast superiority i didn't know if we were going to get to episode three much less 33 so i know this is this is great yeah. and, we, and we're coming up on our one year uh, anniversary which is going to be a lot of fun i'm baking oh, yeah. i'm going to bake us a cake oh uh, that's nice <laughs> Yeah, sure. Uh, anyway, uh, a rush cake. Um, so, okay, folks, like the naked, the naked star man on the on the star, or what? Yeah, that, that probably has been done. I'm guessing. I think so. I think so. Probably by numerous people <laughs> who have been on this show. In fact, <laughs> it's true. Well, folks, uh, remember this show is hosted by fans for fans, and our listeners know that we are inclusive. Each week, we try to mix it up with guests and content. We want fans to join us on this magnificent journey. Um, Before I forget, I just wanted to quickly thank uh, our guests on episode 30 and 31, uh, Tom Bodoin and Donna Halper for an inspirational talk on Rush and religion. Those, that was a great. That was really great. Yeah. I I got a lot of feedback on that episode. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I, uh, I think people who listen to the show, like maybe appreciate that we took a risk with that one and we're yeah. decide then that we were like let's get out there a little bit yeah and th- this is the only band i feel like that could really support that where that's appropriate because they had a lot to say on the topic um yeah th- i i imagine there are probably a lot of people out there listening who are like you know man i wish people would talk about this topic or you know and i i want us to get to all of it yeah uh because there's just so much there um and i think we're going to that is most, what I feel. Most definitely. And uh, Tom Bodoin, what a, what a, of course, Donna Halper needs no introduction to mm-hmm. the Rush uh, community. Uh, Donna's a friend of the show and uh, yep. just always a, a, a real important voice on uh, all, all matters Rush. Uh, and uh, Tom, uh, just a reminder, um, earned his Master of Theological Studies from Harvard University School of Divinity. Uh, and has a PhD in religion and education at Boston College. If you haven't listened to episodes 30 and 31, Rush and Religion, please do so. Uh, I think it's some of our best uh, material. Uh, here at Two Guys Talking Rush, we're fans of the talented crews who make up the live event and touring industry. Uh, hopefully we're re- reaching a curve as uh, as uh, people get vaccinated. Dan, you, you just recently completed your I vaccination. Got my second dose yesterday. How, how, was, the se- how was the second? Any anything it's been fun i was i was prepared for like maybe the second one i'll feel a little more but uh i have like a little soreness where the shot was that's it i did see however that i can't even remember who it was some band when i came home uh put out like an advertisement that they're doing a socially distanced show somewhere uh and what i'm hoping is that as more people get vaccinated that's going to clear the way for bands to start slowly you know it's not going to be overnight but for them to slowly start coming back and for these people to get their livelihoods back again that's going to take a little time but i'm i'm hopeful yeah and i want to i want to see these people and they're good people that we've interviewed i want to see them get their livelihoods back and not be worried about this anymore yeah totally rough it's been a rough year yeah well i scheduled my uh, appointment for um vaccination for the end of april so uh, that's coming around and um, I was hoping I could get it sooner, but whatever. But uh, I just wanted to see how you'd react first and then, then I would get it. I got, <laughs> that's, that's I just smart. want to reveal that to you now. I just want, I was waiting to see how you'd re- you, know, you have that slight twitching, which is now subsided, yeah. but right. uh, now yeah. I feel better about it. Yeah. Yeah, slight twitching. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, well, I get, remember I got the Pfizer vaccine, right? right. My wife, got the moderna vaccine and oh. the second the second one like knocked her flat on her ass oh however i also know people who got the moderna vaccine and nothing happened to them so i, I think it's everyone is everyone is different everyone's going to respond differently yeah well like i was saying um with regard to live shows and and, and the production people who are out of work and, and and many others who surround the live event industry uh please support the sweet relief musicians fund at sweetrelief.org 
A small donation will help thousands of music industry people who have been infected by COVID-19. Sweet Relief Musicians Fund provides financial assistance to all types of career musicians and music industry workers who are struggling to make ends meet while facing illness, disability, or age-related problems. In other words, healing musicians in need. We've all received so much out of out of music and it's time to give a little back so please do so well just a reminder folks uh you can hear our wonderful podcast on tune in apple podcast spotify pandora simplecast and many others this show is recorded on video or in video so you please check out our youtube channel and click subscribe a quick uh, shout out to rushradio.org you can find rushradio.org in your tune in app another quick shout out to the mighty why why not uh, their music can be heard in the in our show's intro uh, and another incredible band. And um, I just, wa- I just read that uh, why, why not? I think they just released their new album pieces mm-hmm. and they uh, have a show scheduled in October yep. uh, in Connecticut. So I, I might try to make it out to that show. I'm not sure. Or not. Yeah. Um, they, um, I think I read that they just got distribution in Japan Wow. for their record also, which is like nicely done. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Well, uh, Rush fans, we want to hear from you. If you have any comments, suggestions, ideas, or questions about our show, please submit them uh, to us. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, even the negative stuff, uh, you know, feel free. Go, go, go at it. Come at us. Come We're on, not getting a lot of that. Yeah, it's like, come on. It's, it's okay. It's... Yeah, don't hold back. You know, if you don't like us, just let us know. Uh, at least let us know why you don't like us. I don't, you know, I just yeah. don't like you isn't enough. Not just we don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you can email us at two guys talking rush at gmail.com. That's two T W O guys talking rush at gmail.com. We're always looking for super fans. So, uh, and often we have a rush super fan spotlight. What is a super fan? What makes you a super fan? Uh, please email us to tell you. Tell us why you should be on Two Guys Talking Rush. Perhaps you have a huge Rush collection, special tattoo you like to show. Maybe your grandmother loves Rush and you don't. Yeah, but any grandmothers that love Rush? They're man. probably, uh, I hate to say this, but there probably are. Because would, yeah. people, people our age are yeah. starting to become grandparents. Yeah. yeah. So yes, is probably I my, maybe talk to them. We want to know if they're like great grandparents. Uh-huh. Like them. I think that's what that's what we need at this point. Any great grandparents out there that love Rush? Email us. Yes. Are Not, you in your 90s? Do you know what yeah. email is? <laughs> <laughs> Send us a smoke signal. Well, actually, yeah. if you're a great grandparent who loves Rush but doesn't know how to use email, just forget about it. <laughs> yeah, just don't bother. <laughs> But thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to uh, sh- give another shout out to Ed Stinger at rushasaband.com. Uh, we love Rush as a band as well as the Power Windows website, 2112.net. Check them both out. Actually, Ed is a guest on our show today, the mighty Ed Stinger. And uh, we thank Ed so much for all of his efforts. Um, You can also visit us at twoguystalkingrush.com. T-W-O, guystalkingrush.com. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash T-W-O, twoguystalkingrush. Twitter, twitter.com slash the number two, guys, talk rush. And again, please subscribe to our two guys talking rush YouTube channel. Um, also, uh, we just a re- as a reminder, we receive no revenue from doing this podcast. However, it does take a small amount to keep it going. Uh, if you're interested in fueling our passion to bring you the most up-to-date rush news and awesome guests and content, please check out our two guys talking rush store at two guys talking rush.com where you can acquire coffee mugs, t-shirts, buttons, stickers, and other cool stuff. Also our Patreon uh, 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 account is uh, www.patreon.com slash two guys talking rush so you can give 50 cents a month a buck a month whatever whatever you want to do do it if you don't want to do it then don't do it but there it is um, you know helping us out a little bit to keep this uh, keep this machine going is is good well uh, in rush news as we do each week uh, this month in, in, in tour rush tour history in 1974 rush is at uh, the taxandria co-op in Arcona, Ontario, Canada. It sounds like a sounds like there might be sawdust on the floor there. Or something. something, yeah. <laughs> Maybe like after a cattle show, there might be a. Um, I'm not sure. It's possible. You ever see a show at the Taxandria Co-op? In, uh, I've Arcona? missed the opportunity to to do that, but maybe one of our listeners was there and can tell us. Has any Rush fan out there seen Rush at Taxandria Co-op in Arcona? Ontario, Canada? If so, send us an email. Yes. Uh, 
1975, Rush won their first Juno for most promising group. That's an understatement. I'll say. In 1975, Rush are at Wendler Arena in Saginaw, Michigan, USA. In 75, Rush played the Memorial Coliseum in Fort Wayne, Indiana on the Flyby Night Tour. In 1978, Rush played the Curtis Hickson Hall in Tampa, Florida on the Farewell to Kings Tour. In 1980, Rush played the Max Bell Arena in Calgary, Alberta on the Permanent Waves Tour. In 1981, Rush played Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, Ontario on the Moving Pictures Tour. In 83, they played the University of South Carolina Coliseum in Columbia, South Carolina on the Signals Tour. In 86, they play the Mecca Arena in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on the Power Windows Tour. In 1990, they play the Memorial Coliseum in Portland, Oregon on the Presto Tour. In 90, they also play the Seattle Center Coliseum in Seattle, Washington on the Presto Tour. In 94, they play the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, Indiana on the Counterparts Tour. In 99, the film Ed TV was released with Matthew McConaughey wearing a 2112 t-shirt during the hospital. I like Matthew McConaughey. Do you like him? Uh, his, his performance in Tropic Thunder, I thought was brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I don't like go out and see every one of his movies, but he was great in that. Uh, that was also the only movie I've ever liked Tom Cruise in. Yeah, he was great in that. <laughs> what was, what yeah. was the character in that? Was uh, name? Les, Les Grossman. Les, uh, yeah. Les Grossman, yeah. that's hilarious. Yeah. Diet Coke! <laughs> yeah, I, well, yeah, I think Days and Confused was probably my favorite. Uh, yeah. Matthew McConaughey is right. Uh, 2002, Red Star, uh, colon, Sacred Cities by Dennis J. Barton. Book one of the Red Star trilogy, inspired by the work, the works of Rush, was published. 2011, Rush, Beyond the Lighted Stage, won the Juno Award for Music DVD of the Year. We're going to have a future show on the Rush, Beyond the Lighted Stage uh, mm -hmm. film. Well, this month in Rush News, a newly expanded and updated second edition of Hugh Symes' The Art of Rush is coming in August. I need to pick up the, the first edition. <laughs> I don't have it. Uh, do you have any of Hugh Symes' books on Rush? I do not. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you, but do you, there... What's that? Hmm. Go ahead. Good. Oh no, just I, I have certainly like thumbed through them though, and it's impressive stuff, you know, especially now in like the CD age or the thumbnail image age, age to see, you know, the way they're supposed to be as God intended. Right. On a full page, it's like, oh right, yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Well, I got to pick that up, man. I wonder, wonder what the price tag is on that. I should probably uh, know that. It's not cheap. I, I can know. tell you that. <laughs> well, the Rush Backstage Club announced that the newly expanded and updated second edition of Hughes. Uh, the Art of Rush will be released uh, later this summer. The original edition released back in 2015. Um, this updated edition includes a newly designed cover along with an additional 20 page section featuring the Art of Rush's 40th anniversary releases. The Rush Backstage Club is also including a limited edition record flats pack containing several 12 by 12 printed flats from the archives with every purchase. Huh. and pretty cool so the items description yeah. is yeah i mean the, i love this stuff so it says in the items description that containing original illustrations paintings photography and the incredible stories behind each album that hugh syme has designed with the band since 75 uh, the book's narration was written by music journalist stephen humphreys and includes in-depth interviews with each rush band member and the artist so that sounds cool i i think you could like skip the first edition and just go right to the second one I think you're like right. some really good extras i think you're right uh the four batten foundation is a charity with the the goal of raising awareness and funding for increased research to into juvenile batten disease an ultra rare fatal inherited disorder that primarily affects the nervous system the foundation was founded for four years ago by scottsdale based golf course architect david khan and his wife after and his wife after learning that their twin daughters both suffer from the disease the yeah. foundation sponsors the silent auction each year with most donations coming from the greater golfing community and this year's auction includes a day of golf with rush's alex lifeson that sounds like mm. fun i did not know that yeah i don't play golf but i would golf with him i would totally golf with him and do you, do you I play golf uh never in my life and i can see myself like late at night after 12 hours still being on the first hole just trying like please god just let it go in so i can go home you know yeah 
It's I'm not an you... athlete. And even, and, <laughs> not and an even, athlete. Yeah, even golf. <laughs> like even I'm sure like there's that. some sort of, you have some athleticism that you don't, what do you know? Do you twiddle your thumbs very good? I twiddle my thumbs. Yeah. Uh, I do that. You know, I do this thing with my fingers a lot where that's, I crack them. That's good. Um, I I am curious though about playing with guns, and I know that that's oh. considered a sport by some yeah. people. Yeah. So that kind of athleticism, <laughs> I, I might embrace one day. <laughs> well, I would become a golf player if if Alex licensed if I won that package. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, totally. it, says, it says here, those golf course packages donated by clubs, club members, and influential organizers from around the con county are a major reason for the uh, auction's broad support. Available for bidding this year are golf rounds at a wide array of Golf Digest America's 100 greatest, its second 100 courses, such as Friars Head, Oak, Oakmont, Bally Neal, Oakland Hills, Ivernus Club, Quail Hollow, Maidstone, Pikewood National, on and on and on. Um, this looks like uh, uh, a wonderful event uh, mm -hmm. to, s to spend uh, a day golfing with Alex Lifeson. So definitely check that out, guys. Uh, the auction kicked off uh, this past week. It will run to the end of March. You can view uh, items uh, up for bid uh, online. And um, I think the Alex Lifeson has a bid of 10,000 already. And you can find this at fourbatten.org, F-O-R-E-B-A-T-T-E-N.org, a good cause. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, would, it's, I, would play, I would play golf with him. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, prior to the pandemic last year, the Canadian Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences, C-A-R-A-S, had planned on presenting the 2020 Walt Grealis Special Achievement Award to longtime Anthem slash SRO Vice President Peggy Sacconi at the 2020 Juno Gala Dinner and Awards. However, the event was canceled and the presentation was put on hold. Uh, happy to say that Sacconi was finally presented with the award at this year's Juno Awards ceremony, which uh, took place uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago, which is kind of cool. Um, people talk very highly of Peggy and um, I you know, hope she's doing well. She's definitely a friend yeah. of the show. Absolutely. Um, Iconic by collect Collections is commemorating, that's Collections with two Zs at the end, is right. commemorating the 40th anniversary of Russia's Moving Pictures album with a set of three officially licensed limited edition poster screen prints by Toronto artist Miles Sang. The 18 by 24 screen prints come in a, in a main edition, five color screen print, uh, and a uh, yep five color screen print for seventy five bucks, uh, and a limelight variant six color glow in the dark screen print. These things are wild uh, for one hundred fifty bucks, and a eighteen and a half by twenty five twenty four and a half country place edition wood veneer panel and hand welded metal frame for four hundred bucks. Wow! Each hand numbered screen print has a hol holographic authenticity sticker on the back. The prints were made available for purchase last week but now it looks like some of them are sold out for uh, a few a few of these but uh it's pretty amazing uh the artwork on this so definitely check that out it's iconic by collections iconic by collections the latest issue of german magazine eclipsed includes a cover feature on rush and the 40th anniversary of moving pictures uh definitely check that at uh, uh at their website eclipsed um what is it? It's the 40th anniversary of moving pictures. Why isn't there a bigger? I haven't heard anything. I and know. I, like, what's going on? If if there's any of their albums that I would expect to get, like the lavish treatment, it's that one. I mean, that's that's the one. You know, uh, I'm shocked that I haven't heard anything. The only reason, maybe, that it makes sense is because they might be waiting till closer to Christmas, especially yeah. if it's like a big package. Uh, but you know, I mean, the the stuff that they've given us so far, where, where it's usually like the original album, like a live disc. You know, I I I have felt they could maybe give a little more than that. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, at the same time, it's I buy them. You know, I complain about them, and then the day they come out, I buy them. So <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they they know as long as they've got people like me, you know, it's like okay, we're good. We don't have to we don't have to do anything special. Yeah, but for, for moving pictures, I would ex I would expect a little something more. I know it's like the 40th anniversary this year. I mean, we have a whole year to celebrate it. We are going to have a very special show 
uh, on the Moving Pictures album and try to do something a little different for folks. So mm-hmm. stay tuned on Two Guys Talking Rush with regard to a uh, celebration of the probably the greatest album to ever be recorded mm-hmm. in the history of albums being recorded, right? Uh, well, the Fishers Art Council in Noblesville, Indiana, will be presenting a virtual reception with the with Rush album artist Hugh Syme as part of an exhibit now on display through March on the second level of the art gallery at City Hall. The event will feature a live interview with Syme via Facebook and a chance for virtual attendees to send questions through the comments. You can register for the event online at fishersartcouncil.org. That's F I S H E R S Fishers artscouncil.org. Hugh's work, it says, has been on display since January with rotating exhibits at the Art Gallery at City Hall. The current exhibit, Music and and Cover Art, features 13 prints. Um, The exhibit will change to Music Art of Rush with 25 prints on display through uh, the month of March. The Art Gallery at City Hall is located at one municipal drive in Fishers, open daily Monday through Friday. 8.30 8.30 to 4.30, excluding holidays. So people who can make it out there, uh, who live in Indiana, should go. Any Rush fans? I'm sure there's tons of Rush fans in Indiana. I know several. Yeah. Let them yeah. know, Dan. Let them know. I shall. <laughs> uh, instrumental prog supergroup, The Aristocrats, guitarist Guthrie Govan, bassist Brian Beller, and drummer Marco Miniman will be releasing their new live album, Freeze, all caps, exclamation point, Freeze! Live in Europe, 2020 on May 7th. The album was recorded just before the pandemic lockdowns in February 2020 in Spain and includes a special performance of Get It Get It Like That with a drum solo by Miniman dedicated to Neil Peart, who passed away while the band was on tour. You can oh. currently pre-order the album uh, at Bandcamp, or you can also listen to a preview of the track Spanish Eddie. Interesting. Yeah. Mike Portnoy and John Petrucci were a recent guests on the Prague Report podcast to talk about the new upcoming Liquid Tension Experiment album, LTE3, and to help put together the Ultimate Rush album. Um, you can listen to the podcast uh, on YouTube. Uh, you, Yahoo News. Yeah, is Yahoo still around? Yes. Jeez. How are they doing? Uh, they're doing well, actually. They... Uh, they... It's called They Hit Many Verticals. Okay. That's the business speak for it. That's, yeah, so that's why they still exist. Okay. Yeah. Yahoo News posted an article in the lead up uh, to this uh, uh, past weekend or weekend prior Grammy Awards where they list uh, 15 rock stars who never won a Grammy but definitely should have, one of which is Rush. Mm-hmm. Despite re- mm-hmm. despite re- Seriously, despite receiving seven nominations, Rush has never won a Grammy. The Prague Trio has earned seven nominations through the years. It's unfathomable that Rush's Grammy nominations ever tra- translated to wins. Not even Neil Peart's virtuosic, virtuos- virtuosic drumming on O Baterista could do the trick. The mm-hmm. legendary Prague outfit earned six nominations for Best Rock Instrumental Performance, and most re- recently in 2010, one for Rush Beyond the Lighted Stage, the documentary about the band. Yeah, man, listen, out of all the crappy, stupid Grammys that have been given out to people that don't even deserve them, Rush doesn't get one damn Grammy? The two things I don't care about is the Grammys and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They got in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and that's great, but I was already resigned to they will never get their due. Uh, Grammys, uh, to me, tend to reward um what's the word i'm looking for dog shit yeah so um you know to, i mean to me for them not to get recognized and there are a lot of you know there's a lot of bands that i think are very important you know like iron maiden judas priest who have never been recognized where it's like after a while you're like maybe that's a badge of honor not to be recognized by these people maybe maybe that proves you actually have some credibility uh because i don't i don't think they reward like musicianship i don't think that's what they're looking for uh i think it's more about like sales sales and attitude that sort of thing um and people who are who are like very close music listeners who you know who you know are really like you know listen to technique and songwriting and all that sort of thing i I just don't think that's i don't think that's what they do billy eilish you know i have nothing against billy eilish okay i'm sure um even if there was a uh a, syst- uh, a 
even if there was a, a you know a um, a system of record companies that vet bands uh, like they used to, mm-hmm. that perhaps she might have achieved great success. I don't know. However, you know, she walks away with 16 Grammys for whatever, right? right? Rush are three guys who write some of the most important, prolific music for 50 years, and they don't need to even get one. Elite musicians at the top of their field, too. Unbelievable. Who surpass everybody. But again, that's that's not what they're looking for. Yeah. uh, Uh, And Billy, is Billy Eilish even like 20 yet? Or I know. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's okay music. I, it's just not my, I'm not of that generation, obviously. So I'm not going to act like some old guy that doesn't understand it. I'm sure that the generation she's touching upon gets it. However, yeah. Rush have transcended generations. I mean, my Lord, you know, if you combine all the influence they've had over several generations, it far out exceeds uh, uh, anything Eilish has done, I think. Oh um, yeah, no. I mean, my my issue with her is, I, it's not even like I don't think she deserves it or anything like that. It's just she's like awfully young, and I th- they seem to be on track, putting her on the chew them up and spit them out plan. Yeah. Where like in two years she can't get arrested anymore, and she's gonna be like twenty one years old. Yeah. So you know, I mean, I that's happened so many times to yeah. so many artists. Did, uh, did Neil did Neil Peart get recognized in the memoriam? I don't even know. Yeah, he I know did. I, oh, okay, good. Uh, yeah. But it was like two seconds. Yeah, right. Unbelievable. Yeah. Eddie and Van Halen know, maybe got three seconds. That's incredible. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, both those guys, right? Uh, shame. What a shame. Yeah, it, I mean, again, it just shows that they don't reward musicianship. That's not what it's about. Yeah, so. yeah. Anyway, moving on. I'm sure there's a lot of Rush fans that feel the same way we do, and um, probably, yeah. yeah, most definitely. <laughs> Well, the, the Billings Gazette posted an article about the venerable Billings, Montana concert venue, the Metra, currently the first interstate arena, listing off 12 platinum selling rock artists who performed at the Metra at the peak of their career, including Rush, who performed two shows there on May 20th, 1978, and on another September 14th, 1982. Very interesting. Hmm. Uh, in no- back in November, Hudson Music announced uh, through their f- Facebook page that they are sponsoring or they were sponsoring a Neil Peart drum set scholarship in partnership with the Progressive Arts Society, PAS.org. The uh, scholarship will annually award four drummers the opportunity for online drum set lessons from well-known artists and educators. And PAS has begun accepting applications for the scholarship with details posted at their YouTube channel. As it says, up to four $500 $500 scholarships will be awarded to provide individuals the opportunity to take a few lessons with the drummer of their choice, uh, either via online or in person. Eligibility uh, includes the scholarship is open to all active Percussive Arts Society members. Uh, application materials uh, include applicants must submit a video of no more than five minutes and a statement of why this award would be important to their development. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, regarding PAS.org and this effort, you can email Perk Arts. So it's P E R C A R T S at PAS.org. Perk, P E R C A R T S, Perk Arts at PAS.org. So if you if you got a kid or if you know somebody that's yeah. into drumming, I mean, listen, that's cool. Uh, they uh, Hudson Music produces instructional how to videos and lessons and lesson books for drums, bass, and guitar, including Neil Peart's Anatomy of a Drum Solo, which I actually have, and yeah. taking center stage and instructional videos. So follow, you can follow Hudson Music on Facebook, subscribe to their YouTube channel, uh, and uh, pretty cool. Well, uh, Dan, you know, each week we have, we, tr- we again, we try our hardest to book interesting guests. It's not an easy task, as Dan, went talking, Dan and I were talking about that. It's a massive uh, uh, effort that requires a lot of, choreography and yep. a little a little dance a little da- song and dance but um you know hopefully people are taking us a little bit more seriously now that we've reached the, th- the number 30 threshold of these podcasts uh and have seen our resume of of guests that they might say oh well i need to be i need to be on two guys talking rush it's not it's not as if we're we're hounding them we want people to hound us right so yeah yeah. Well, uh, that has actually happened a couple of, like, two times, a yeah. couple, yeah. <laughs> um, which is, you know, but we're, I think we're past the point of, like, these are the new new guys on the block. I think we're past that point. 
And, you know, the more we go on and the more we try to be interesting and listenable, I think that, you know, that'll, that'll come. I think that'll happen. Uh, it's just our job to make sure there's a reason for them to want to listen to us. That's all. Most definitely. Well, mm -hmm. um, here on Two Guys Talking Rush, we want to welcome fellow Russiaholic Ed Stinger. His blog, Rush is a Band, is a must read for every Rush fan with thousands of registered users and even more visits per day. We love Ed Stinger and can't wait to chat with him about what it's been like to blog about the best band in the universe, Rush. Welcome to Two Guys Talking Rush, Ed Stinger. Well, th thanks for coming on, Ed. Yeah. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, totally, man. And um, I, I feel like I know you, but I don't know you because uh, I'm always, if I'm doing anything Rush related going way back, I always reach out to you and you've been so kind and generous to kind of push that uh, information out to the Rush community. So I remember yeah. your art show. Yeah, I remember that, man. That was such back that, in was like 2008, 2008 or something. 2008, man. I, you know, what's weird about that is it was sort of pre iPhone. I either I couldn't afford one or people weren't using them like they do now uh, at concerts. Yeah. And I snuck in a like a 10 or 12 megapixel digital camera, which cost me like 300, 400 bucks at the time. And I hate to say this, but I just, I had like front row seats. I just kept snapping and snapping, like, you know, going through SD cards. And then I had all these beautiful photos and I put that little exhibit on. And it's sort of, I mean, in a little coffee shop, you know, tons and tons of people flew out there and I was sort of overwhelmed. And then we had, yeah, Lotus, I remember, Lotus Land. I, mean, I didn't go, but I followed it. I remember Donna, Donna was there. Donna was, the, Donna was there. Lotus Land played and, yeah, that was uh, a little uh, that was fun. That was a good memory, man, you know, but, uh, I, you know, thank you for coming on. And, um, you know, I want to say uh, you've been such a generous uh, person uh, with your time and effort. I imagine you don't get paid very much for running rushes of band .com. <laughs> No, I still have a day job. <laughs> I yeah. was going to say I haven't gotten I haven't you know, become rich from the website yet. <laughs> That's yeah. funny, but <laughs> yeah. But for our Rush fans that listen to the show, uh, Ed Stanger is the uh, uh, the creator uh, and host of, I call it a website, but it's really a blog called rushisaband.com. And I got to say, you you and um, I forget the individual's name that runs the 2112.net. You, you guys Derek? are sort of the, yeah, Derek, he, you guys Derek. are sort of the pioneers of Rush uh sort of uh, on the internet maybe even before rush.com was around rush as a band uh was there so oh, it was there yeah i mean yeah. eric eric hansen his power windows site right is is older than mine oh okay but yeah he's got and he's got a lot of stuff going on there whereas yeah. mine my site was i wanted to make it just a blog news for news feed or 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 um oriented yeah well, but I talked to I, Eric is a good guy. I, I talked to him on a regular that talk. I've never actually met him in person. That's but, funny, right? But we chat online all the time. Yeah. Him and also John, who runs the CygnusX1.net. CygnusX1.net. Yeah. Yeah. We're all, well, before we get into Rush as a band and your, your creation uh, there, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, where'd you grow up? Maybe, uh, you know, what were you like as a kid, uh, music, yeah. and how you got into Rush, man? Sure. Yeah, I um, born and bred in Northeast Ohio. I grew up about 60 miles east of Cleveland in a little town called Kingsville, uh, close to Lake Erie. Um, and let's see, I how I got into Rush. I, I was born in 1970, so I was only four years old when you know, Rush, Rush's first album came out. Sure. But I had older brothers. Uh, my oldest brother was eight years older than me so um he's the one he got into rush i think you know when he was about 13 14 around, around 21 12 when that came out and so when i was a little kid i just remember listening to listening to all their music in the background the classic rock and rush especially and um so he was a huge fan and he got into playing bass because of getty and uh I didn't come around to Rush really until I was older, until I was about 12 and 82. Um, and uh, I guess grow, growing up, I was kind of, you know, a nerdy kid, you know, into 
sci-fi and fantasy and all that. So um, the, the, the one day it rush really hit me was um, I think I was 12. I was just rummaging through my brother's closet. And I, this is like the discovery story. Um, I found an old tape of 2112, like beat up cassette, you know, the, the tapes hanging out of it and I had to get a pencil and wind it back up. And uh, I went, went upstairs in my room and I had my mono cassette player and I played it. And uh, I, I just remember, you know, looking at the song titles and yeah, I didn't know. I was in the top 40 mostly at that point. Or, right. um, and, you know, there's a 20 minute song with all these different parts. And uh, so I was intrigued just by that. And then after listening to it, I was totally hooked. Um, and, uh, and how old were you? I was 12. Wow. Yeah, it was like seventh grade. Yeah, like the fall of seventh That's grade. Pretty, it's pretty young to be into something as complex as uh, twenty one twelve. Yeah, it was it was really cool. Yeah. I remember going to, going to school and telling all my friends, "Oh, you got to hear this band Rush." And most of them already knew oh, more really? about Rush than I did. That's funny. And um, so I, I I think the first then I had to get more. So I think I went out to the mall the next weekend with my friend and. Um, they didn't have a bunch of, they didn't have a lot in stock actually, but they did have caressive steel. And, uh, you know, I looked at the, the cover and the song titles and I was like, Necromancer, that's gotta be awesome. Cause I was, I was totally into Lord of the Rings at the time. Right. Um, so that was my, my first exposure to Rush really was 2112 and caressive steel. And then I kind of went once I, I, my bro, older brother, who was the big Rush fan, discovered that he heard me listening to Rush and he saw that I bought Cress of Steel on cassette. And he's like, oh man, come here. And he rips out all his Rush LPs. And um, you know, he, he sits with me and listens to, when we listen to Feral World of Kings and Hemispheres and Permanent Waves and um, Moving Pictures. And uh, so I made cassette tapes of all those. You know, just devoured those that over you know the course of a few months I think and then they eventually went back and got the you know listened to the debut album and fly by night and uh just kind of took off from there the rest was history huh? what was your yeah. first rush show first rush show was um was power windows tour um I remember wanting to go for grace under pressure but I was I was only 14 and none of my friends drove and you know, it was like an hour and a half to get to the, you know, the closest arena. Plus we didn't have money. So, um, so that's were, that. <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah. So when I was 16 though, when power windows came out, I think it was, yeah, it was 86, I believe, or 85. Late 85, 86. I, I, that's around the time. Yeah. yeah. I probably think it was 85, man. Yeah. yeah I think the, um, but yeah, that was my first show. And I pretty much um, saw every tour when they came through Cleveland um, up up until um, Vapor Trails is, was the first tour that I think I saw multiple shows of. And then ab subsequently after that, I would go to multiple shows. Nothing crazy like, you know, some, yeah. some of the people that... Yeah, traveling. I, I usually go like three, around three-ish shows per tour since then. Yeah. Were you were you into the eighties? I mean, you 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 started listening to twenty one twelve, and obviously there's a distinct difference between twenty one twelve and Power Windows. Yeah. Were you sort of like confused by Rush in the eighties, uh, based on that? Yeah. Um, right, because the first album, I, I became you know I became a fan fan in eighty two and just kind of went through their catalog, um, except for Signals. Signals came kind of later. Yeah. And signals itself i was like wow this is kind of weird but i still dug it i mean i didn't like it as much as the other stuff but sure um at the time um then grace under pressure came out and that was a big uh kind of big difference from from their older stuff definitely sure um, and it took me a while to to kind of for it to grow on me um but God, now I love it. 
And same with power windows. I remember power windows was the one where, where um, I think I wrote a paper on a button on it, you know, a bunch of the songs in English class and yeah. You were that, that you were that kid. Yes, I was that <laughs> Well, you, you have like what I would call the, you know, we've done a few of these shows now and you have what I would call the classic introduction to Rush where you were about 12 years old. You have this older brother, the rest is history. Yeah, I that tell you. Lot, yeah, I mean, I can't tell you how many guests we've had on uh, where that's pretty much exactly what the story is. I did not have an older brother, uh, and I'm, and I also don't have younger siblings. So you know, my story isn't quite the same. But it's like that time in your life, like that age, you're so primed with all this like teenage angst and everything for what they have to offer. They offer something emotionally that at that point in your life just hits right at the bullseye oh yeah exactly yeah That's and it. it doesn't and it doesn't take much after you hear it to be like well okay then i want to hear all their other 15 albums now this minute <laughs> yes exactly what happened right. with 2112 yeah. that yeah. just really struck home with me yeah yeah well power windows was my my gateway into rush i i really hadn't known much about rush until I was introduced to that, uh, that album, then of course, Hold Your Fire, and then the tour came. And then I think the tipping point for me was just going to see them live. I was like, holy shit, this is incredible. You know, that changed everything for me. Um, yeah. then, then it all sort of made sense with Rush, you know, at that point after seeing them on the Hold Your Fire tour, you know. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Great live band. Oh my God. Yeah. Just exemplary. Um, so, uh, you, you know, flash forward, um, I suspect. Uh, you love all rush right do you do there is there any part of rush that you do you, you've dedicated so much of your life and time to this uh wonderful blog and 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 uh, website is there anything in the rush catalog that you don't really enjoy or do you like it all well i want to say i won't there, there's albums i like more more than others yeah less than others i should say yeah yeah um probably for me the 90s rush is probably my least favorite and i say that um, uh, roll the bones counterparts I, roll the bones counterparts yeah. test for echo but i still love those albums you know yeah. it's like yeah you're not you're not dogging on those albums no, I'm not. it's just they just there's other stuff you like more is yeah. what you're saying yeah right yep. especially test for echo that that one never it took that me seems, a long time that seems to be the one that people have a lot of trouble with and i i like it i never really yeah. had any problems with it but but i keep hearing people being like man Oh, test for it's, echo. Oh yeah, my God. But, you know, and it's but like, then again, I'll go back and listen to it now and I'll, I'll listen to like, oh, time and motion. And I'm like, oh, that's a great song. Cool yeah, that's a good song. Driven, yeah. Driven is a good yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, there's, a, there's like, an instrumental on that. I mean, there's some things on it that are just weak, but if you know the Rush legacy and the story, you know why, right? The song, this, there's not as focused of songwriting and, and all that, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, totally. So how, how do you start with the blog? How do you get the idea and when do you get this idea to, we, did, you, did you feel as though there was a, a deficit in Rush information on Rush? Were you not getting enough out yes. there? Okay, talk about no, that's it. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, around 2000, is when you know the rumblings began started to to uh to rise up that you know rush was coming back and i remember in 97 when everything happened to neil i thought they were done yeah, yeah. so when i you know when when i heard they were they were going to record an album i was really excited and at that time that was when i got my first real job as a web developer so that's kind of what my profession is i program websites you still do that uh, still do that and uh, i think in 2002 um, i had my my son was born and i decided to make a website just a personal site so that i could kind of share my stories of being a dad and and uh post pictures for all my relatives and friends this was you know pre-social media so you, you didn't really have that um, so I had that rather than, you know, email a bunch of pictures around in my family, but it was 2002 and I was, you know, Vapor Trails was coming out and I was just stoked about Rush. So I'd post about Rush a lot too. And, uh, at that time, just blogging was kind of a big thing. So I had this whole list of blogs I would visit all the time. And 
I always wondered, you know, why isn't there a rush blog? I, I want a rush newsfeed blog. Cause I would go to message boards. I was kind of more of a lurker on message boards back then. And uh, you could find a lot of cool information and cool little rush news tidbits and message boards, but it was kind of, usually kind of buried. And um, so I think it was, I kept looking for a rush blog and I, I wanted somebody to create one. And then 2005, in the summer 2005, I, I had some time and I said, what the hell, I'll make my own. And so that's when I started just putting it together. And then I finally launched it in October, I think, of 2005. And I actually seeded it. All the, all the rush posts I'd made in my personal site, I kind of seeded my rush as a band blog with those. So it's, in a way, it started in 2002, but not, the official launch was 2005. And in calling it Rush is a band. Yeah, what's that. The, what's the origin story of that? I, I won't. I won't claim that I came up with that myself, but and it was in the in the early mid '90s. I was on a uh, Rush mailing list, the National Midnight Star, and uh, I don't know exactly remember what happened, but somebody was either selling these bumper stickers that said Rush is a band, or they linked to someone who was selling it, but. Uh, long story short, I just, I bought this, I bought a bumper sticker and I had it in my car for a while. And I thought it was just a cool, cool little, you know, saying, Rush is a band. It, it just kind of sticks in your head, you know? Yeah. And uh, so when I was making the blog, I thought, yeah, that would be a great name for a Rush blog and grab the uh, domain and went from there. Wow. Um, what does that mean, Rush is a band? <laughs> well, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, right. No, it's, what does, what it's, does it mean to you? To, for one thing, Rush has a lot of different meanings, different contexts. Um, so it's a kind of word that you always, if, if you do it back then, I remember doing Google searches for Rush and, you know, it'd come up with stuff about Rush Limbaugh. Every, or, every time, yeah. Or, her, <laughs> or something about a fraternity sorority Rush. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or you know, there's a there's a movie called Rush. Oh yeah, the cocaine right. movie Rush. Yeah, yeah I remember that. <laughs> you, know, you get all this stuff, and he's like, no, 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 I want Rush. Not that band. one. Rush is a band. Yeah. You know, so you, you still have to do. It. You have to search Rush band. So. Yeah. Right. Well, we we uh, plug we plug Rush as a band on every episode, man, because we we just appreciate your your just being a uh, sort of a news a direct news source for for Rush and. Cool. Yeah, we, we really Thank appreciate you. the effort you put in. Um, so uh, what's the biggest, what are some of the biggest challenges uh, about gathering information about Rush? How do you gather all this information and put it up? I mean, it, I have to say, even post, sadly, post Neil passing, seems to be a lot more going on with Rush uh, than not. Like, yes, other bands, you know, you'll hear about things, uh, re-releases and uh, maybe an interview here and there, but is now that that neil has passed sadly has is rush getting bigger <laughs> well, or rather or rather in spite of what yeah, happened is it say, just continuing is it growing? Is it right, growing? exactly because that's a it's a good point because after neil passed i was like i was really bummed and i was like god do i don't want to do this anymore yeah. and, and then i you know i just kept at it and you know they're just more rush news kept coming in there's always somebody talking about rush or getty's doing something or alex is doing something um or you know some box set is coming out whatever there's always there's always news to report and um it's certainly different than when i first started um since god it was it's been over 15 years but back wow. back then you know there, like i said there, there was no social media so um did you, you ever did you ever get pissed off that rush be evolved into sort of this mainstream <laughs> band i mean i mean I, i'm this i'm the same age as you i was born in 1970 and uh you know I, I like the fact that not everybody loved rush it was more rush for me you know and uh uh and i and i embraced the fact that no one understood me liking rush or no one understood rush at all you know i sort of was bullied or i call it rush shaming you know being shamed yeah. right so yeah. when rush started to show up 
uh, and popular culture on cartoons and, uh, and, and documentaries and referenced in movies. I sort of like, it's, it was sort of like when uh, the Osbournes came out, you know, and Ozzy was just this goofy bumbling idiot, you know, and, and yeah. I was like, well, wait, he's the Prince of Darkness, right? You know, so right. Right. was that, did that bum you out when, when that was occurring? Or were you glad that? Yeah, I was kind of excited about it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you know, that happened kind of in the late 2000s is really when it, yeah. that, that, that was a huge resurgence. Of, you know, they, they were everywhere. Yeah. Um, and people sort of just, everybody sort of just figured them out, figured them out at once. Yeah. And that was, right? that was cool with it. I was like, you know, finally people are starting to get it and they're starting to get some respect. Yeah. Um, but, but eventually over time, it can get a little old. I mean, it's, you, you see a lot of people just, um, and especially these days, like a lot of the, like all the online music sites, you know, they, they post all these clickbait headlines about Rush just because they know Rush fans will, will check them out. And, They're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, every yeah, time. Exactly. Like, what are, oh, what are they on. saying? What is it? Yeah. 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 Um, but, um, everything's so Tom Sawyer heavy, though. You know, it's like, yeah, that seems to be the yeah. the, the gateway song, right? For uh, lists. Uh, People for, love, love to post lists these days. Oh, yeah. Big time. Well, yes, they do. Yeah. But going back to that original question, how do you manage to gather so much information and corral this yeah. into an orderly and uh, organizational well, way? It, like I said, it has changed. When I first started the site, I I had to do it all myself because nobody knew about the site yet. So um, I would comb all the message boards, look for Rush News tidbits. I'd look on news sites, do all kinds of web searches. Um, uh basically just try to compile stuff myself and just kept posting about it. And occasionally I'd come across something interesting that I hadn't seen anybody else post about. And I would uh, post it on message boards and say, Hey, you know, check this out. I found this piece of news, whatever it is. And um, so people started to tune into that on the message boards. And that's kind of how I, grew organically from there people liked what i was doing and i got more more followers and um once people started to regularly visit the site then i get emails and well in those first few years a lot of what i a lot of the stuff i'd come across was people sending me an email about it um and i'd figure stuff out that way and then uh social media happened and i start to find stuff on Facebook or Twitter and um, yeah, it just, you know, it just kind of changed over the years. And, it's, uh, it certainly has grown. I mean, I think, uh, oh, yeah. you know, when I say that you're a pioneer and all this, you, you truly are, man. I mean, you created something out of nothing at a time where fans sort of needed it and you became sort of like this network of uh, this, this, this point of access for rush fans. And, and that's uh, exactly where that was my goal. I, yeah. I didn't like the fact that that I I had to dig through a bunch of message boards to find this piece of news, and I wanted I, I thought my think was the general rush fan um, didn't hang out on message boards, and that there are a lot of people out there who would want it wanted like a, just a rush news feed, something they could check every day and say, oh, this is cool, um, and rather than. Uh, and then the other thing was Rush dot Rush dot com. Talking about that earlier, Rush did a horrible job of getting news out. Their website really, they didn't really post anything until they had. When an album came out, they would, you know, kind of push the album, but they wouldn't. They, post, they had some good pictures. merchandise in the beginning. I think it's changed a little bit, but uh, I was getting some yeah. good T-shirts on there. But yeah, yeah, it's much. I want. I will say they're much better at it now. Yeah, um, but. It took them a while to kind of catch on to, to that. And then uh, I don't, Eric Hansen's Power Windows site, he had Rush News on it, and, but it wasn't his central focus. And um, he didn't have a, it wasn't really a blog. And he would kind of focus on some of the bigger Rush News items. But, but he did a good job of that. I just wanted to make a site that was totally focused on that mm -hmm. and would post about all the little weird tidbits that. I love that. 
yeah, yeah that, that any rush fan would probably be interested in but but you don't see it you know you're not going to see it in a, a big music news website or anything so you know take us through your your weekly efforts in doing this you know what is what is what do you how do you do it what are you doing currently yeah. um yeah i have a bunch of different rush you know news feeds and things i've kind of accumulated over the years where i just search a bunch of different rss feeds and um, come across stuff that way people still email me um and i belong to a bunch of facebook groups and and twitter follow a bunch of twitter um twitter accounts and i just still do it that way so I, again it's just kind of compiling anything i yeah. come across yeah and um and i like i said i work in the web development field so yeah. i'm always online right so i just kind of collect stuff and if if it's a big news story i'll put up a post if not i kind of collect it for my friday catch-all post I have my random rush updates post. You know, since post you're on, things. since you're on this episode, when it comes out, will you post your own news about you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask that, man. Um, no, I've done that before. I've done. <laughs> I've been on I, this. I, yeah, Ed Stinger. Wait, I'm like, Ed Stinger. <laughs> this is great because it, it gets a chance for me to talk about myself in the third person. Oh yes. yeah, man, totally, dude. Yeah, it's so cool. So, have you ever uh, met? rush i mean have you ever uh, met the guys uh, and if so where uh, just get i i met getty and alex you know, i had a meeting meet and greet in 2010 nice um me and my eight-year-old son nice and uh does he love rush does he What's love that? does he love rush your son he does yeah he still uh, does that's good so he's not eight he's 18 now oh wow okay so but yeah he still loves rush that's, so that's great cool. i did something right yeah, yeah, he certainly and, did. Uh, <laughs> Are I you... brainwashed him when he was a little kid. You know, I I, I played snakes and arrows over and over and over again in the in the car and Clockwork Angels and. You like that album? You like Snakes and Arrows? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah that that was that's kind of a special album to me just because that was the first album that came out when after I launched my blog. So oh right, I talked okay. about that album a lot and and uh that tour especially yeah that was a great tour, tour and an album that helped kind of launch my my blog i think because yeah it was yeah, very cool. active back then yeah yeah um so uh which if, if i was to ask you um some of the questions you get asked the most in your in your career uh, as a rush blogger or one of the more well-known rush bloggers what do people commonly ask you you know what's the most common question uh, if like i people, haven't already asked them yeah right. if someone's like sending me email yeah i get a lot of emails about people who want me to get them in contact with the band right <laughs> really oh my god because I, you have so yeah. much control over that and yeah. Yeah, right yeah so uh, and i usually point them to anthem yes anthem website yeah. um yeah but yeah that that always sticks out because i get those all the time and i still do that's I'm funny. And as far as the website itself uh, and the blog, are you uh, you're you're a web developer? What's the traffic like? Are you getting a lot of hits on it? I mean, what is your what's the bulk? Yeah, of I'm this? trying to think. It, I haven't. I don't. Yeah. Check it um, that much anymore. Yeah. But. Yeah. It's it's still it, it's been pretty steady though since since uh 2015 so when you know it was really popular and we got a ton of traffic in that span from about you know 07 to 2015 where rush was really active and they were touring all the time and then of course when they stopped touring and stopped really doing it you know being an active band is when it kind of leveled off um probably get half as much as i traffic as i did then um, yeah but, uh, it's still pretty significant i mean a lot a lot of people you know I, I, so social media is it these days so i i interact a lot on twitter and social media and i have like like you know fifty thousand followers on facebook and then like a, a thirty four thousand on twitter so 
Yeah. Um, as a, as yes. a rush, as a rush fan, Ed, how, how 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 did you cope? You know, as a as a, a a huge rush fan, how did you cope with Neil passing? With that yeah. I mean, had you had you heard anything? Did you have any idea that he was prior to us knowing or revealing yeah. that he had? Yeah, good. I, you're right. Um, yeah, it was 2016, I think. I started to hear rumors, you know, um, and usually, you know, I'll discount rumors until I, but I heard enough of them that I do something was going on. And I had heard he had brain cancer. And um, before, you know, it, was a, before know, it was announced. Yeah, this was long. This was. 2016 this was like when it was his first bout of it i guess but um and then in 2016 he had a book one of his books was i forget which one exactly was that series of books from his blog posts that he far and near far and away and it was one of those but it came it was due out in 2016 in the fall and you know, typically he would do interviews to to you know, promote his books. You know, not a lot, but usually a couple. Um, and he did zero, I, there was zero publicity for this book. And that kind of, that, that mm -hmm. uh, kind of made me think maybe something is going on. Right. And so that was, then, then I heard nothing for like, you know, two or three years. And I thought, okay, well, maybe this wasn't as serious as I'd heard. And Maybe he's over it, and like maybe he's better. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what I was hoping. And occasionally you'd see like a couple pictures of him might leak out online. Um, uh, I remember once he, there was one with uh, the, Jerry Shirley, the producer. Uh, I guess Rush had, Getty and Alex had visited him in L.A., and they there was a picture of. Of, of him and Getty, Alex, and Neil. And Neil, you could tell in the picture, he didn't look, you know, he didn't look too great. And that picture disappeared, you know, the, mm. people took it down. You can still find it here and there. Things like that. Um, that kind of clued you in that, you know, he wasn't in the best health, but he, he, really no one knew what the extent was. And it still, still surprises me that he could, he kept it silent and nobody really knew about it. I don't know how in this day and age they were able no, to keep that quiet. That is, incredible. that is a, nothing short of a miracle. Tells you how much they were able to keep that quiet. Had. That's right. Yeah. He had res people respected him. That's why yeah. even people who knew didn't spread, spread it around, you know? Yeah. You know? So when it happened, you know, I was, I, I want to, I wasn't surprised, I guess it was, it was more like, Oh, geez, I guess all those rumors were true. Um, and uh, yeah, I was bummed, but just having all that contact with the Rush community, I mean, people just, I was getting texts left and right and, yeah, I'm sure. and just talking to people. So that support of the whole Rush fan community was really helpful. Um, and just to see online all the outpouring of emotion from everybody, you know, um, did you see or listen to our episode with Greg Rennick? Um, no, I haven't. Oh, you, I wanted to. You should. It's uh, he really he shows some wonderful photos which you can see on our YouTube channel, and um, he really kind of takes us behind the scenes of just his relationship and friendship with Neil, which is really very generous of him to do that. Yeah. He was just a wonderful guest, and um, yeah, I think there's some new stuff to yeah. be learned from that. So yeah, I'm gonna try to do that this weekend. Actually. Yeah, man. I was to that. Totally. That's yeah. Cool. yeah, no, it was wonderful. It was a great episode. So how long do you suspect you're gonna keep Rush as a band going? You know, <laughs> fans want to know. Uh, yeah. I like I said, after Neil passed, I I it was the first time I really considered kind of calling it quits. But um you know, a lot of that was just emotional. I was sure. kind of feeling down. And didn't feel much about like posting anything. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, as as time went on, I kept you know I just kept doing it, and it's it's such a habit for me now that it's hard to stop. <laughs> and uh, 
I I don't foresee I'm going to stop anytime soon. I mean, uh, eventually I will. You know, at some point I'll get I'll retire. <laughs> yeah. When when Neil passed, I mean, I I was working on I mean, getting started on a project to do with them. Uh, with someone else that I knew it, you know, and when he passed it, it just took the wind out of a lot of people's sales that wanted to do things. Uh, a few months later, John called me about, do you want to do this podcast? And by then enough time it passed where I was like, yeah, you know what? I, th I think we can still be doing something. This is still an active thing. Honestly, I think you could keep your website going for like another 50 years and there would still yeah, be interest because you know, it, they don't go away. This is this is the thing that we've noticed. Is like, okay, the yeah. man is the man is not there anymore, but the music is, and we want to continue this in some form. Somehow, yeah. we want to keep carrying the torch for it. Well, I can pick. I can picture like a ninety-year-old Ed. Yeah. Uh, and posting on uh, Russia's been a rush reissue a, a new pair of tube socks or something. Yeah. You know, just. <laughs> Yeah. Just some really watered down bullshit yeah, news. 70, 75th ah, anniversary of yeah. moving pictures. Is coming 75th in. anniversary yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, man. Uh, another well, box set. I know, I know. No, I mean, you're, you're really doing a wonderful thing. And, and I know so many Rush fans uh, uh, really are thankful for uh, just the constant news feed. And, um, you know, we really enjoy it. And uh, a lot of times we'll mention news that you post on your site uh, as a source. And it's really sort of Rush, uh, um, Two Guys Talking Rush, in a lot of ways, is, is an extension of Rush as a band where we want to talk about different things. You know, we don't want to talk about the same old, same old. It just gets a little boring, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, we love that about uh, your uh, site. And we every we mention it every uh, every time uh, in the intro. Um, as far as tribute acts, I want, I'm curious about your thoughts. Are there any are there any bands that you like? Because there's a lot of them now, Ed. I mean, we know this, right? Um, and maybe calling them a... I don't like to call them tribute acts, but sometimes they are. Um, they are. It's, it is what they are. They, they don't like to be it, called tribute acts, right? Uh, call them cover bands, and they'll be oh, begging you to call them tribute worse. acts. Yeah. It's uh, like, we're a tribute act. <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot now ed more than ever um i have some favorites i love why why not i think they're yep. a fabulous band um and they do a great job of uh, sort of um rediscovering uh the essence of rush in a new way um lotus land are friends of mine i think they do a fabulous job do you do you like any uh rush cover uh, yeah i mean you mentioned why why not that's yeah. one that really sticks out they're great. Um, yeah they're phenomenal they're great yeah i, I love rocky as a lead singer oh i love yeah it's great yeah, I mean, yeah. it makes a um, lot of sense pipes yeah definitely. yeah, yeah. But, tim, um, tim the bass player is kind of like a superhero he's a to monster. me uh because i've i've never heard anyone nail getty's tone quite like that in my you know i mean m you know most very serious bass players are getty fans and they'll get close definitely he's the only person i've ever heard where it's like that's exactly it. that's exactly what it sounds like yeah he's great yeah. They're, they're all great yeah they are. they are it's funny a lot of the you know a lot of the tribute bands are fronted by by women which is yes which, is which i love it, works. Yeah. it does work well yeah. um, uh, it's hard for a lot of guys to reach those yeah notes. i know like it's it not really easy yeah. but uh otherwise i mean i don't there's not they they tell you the truth they kind of run together because a lot of a lot of these tribute bands they they come and go. They they'll be active for a few years and then they change names and people swap you know swap band members and I I can't keep track of them that much anymore and I haven't I haven't really um, seen any lately. <laughs> Obviously, nobody has. Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> that's right, that's right. But um, okay. yeah, why why not is the one that really sticks out. Yeah. I've seen a bunch of them. I've seen yeah. a bunch of tribute bands over the years, but yeah. Um, yeah, they're great. They're great. Um, so we, uh, when we have guests on the show uh, and a super guest like you, super fan, uh, we often ask a couple of questions. First off, what, is, what are your uh, top five Rush albums? If you were to choose just five. And uh, live, those... live albums are allowed, by the way. Live albums are allowed, okay. okay. Live albums are allowed. Um, let's see, well, Number one, 2112, uh, easy for me. 
Um, probably permanent waves would be two. Uh, Farewell of the Kings, three. Uh, Caress of Steel would be four. And five. Let's see. I'll say, um, I'll say grace under pressure. Caressive Steel is, is a, is a, is an underloved album for sure. It is. Uh, and it's, it was actually like one of the first ones that I really got into. I loved the Necromancer, like, especially that middle bit where they're jamming. I was just like, you know, my, I, I wasn't fully a fan yet. But when I heard that, I was I was like really blown away by it. I was like, man, these guys can really play. I got I must give them more attention. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why that album like doesn't get as much love as the other ones because it's to me it's up there with everything else. Yeah, I don't understand. But, uh, I understood. Maybe yeah, and maybe having the epic on side two somehow didn't serve them well, you know, because they switched it for the next album and then. The rest is history. So, but, so moving uh, moving pictures didn't make your top five, Ed. Did it? It's not, and that's you've heard uh, it enough. I always I imagine. And I'm not saying moving pictures is a bad album at all, yeah. but it's almost an afterthought sometimes. Is it's like Tom it's okay. Sawyer. I know. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. So it never really pops up. You should just say side two of moving pictures is in my top. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, oh my god and, and if you're, I, I if, definitely lean heavy on the, the 70s stuff sure was, i can tell i'm surprised Caress of steel what? is it since it was the first album fresh album i bought with my own money especially yeah. and you I, probably I, think of it in terms of album sides too because I, I mean up to a certain point that's how i think of them where you know they're very like side a side b then you know then once you get to like you know into like 80s and 90s then we're in the cd age and it's not like that anymore yeah but like those first few albums were absolutely studies in how you sequence an album when it has to be flipped over now, i have a, a cool story about chris and steel the cassette tape i don't know if you guys are familiar with this but you know, I, so i bought the, uh, the cassette tape and on the cassette at least the, the one i got they had i don't know if that was true for all of Different order of songs, right? Yeah, that they, they flipped, they put Didax and Narpets and flipped okay. it with I think I'm going bald. Really? Yeah, that might be a collectible. I don't know if that huh. I don't know if that changed I or whatever. I, uh, I yeah. But it, I had I had a Columbia House version of uh, the first Leonard Skinner album when I was like 14, and they cut off Freebird on side one and then put the guitar solo from Freebird at the beginning of side uh, two. We, yeah, which even at, at like 13 or 14, I, I was like, this is an abomination. You don't do that. Dan, so, you must you must have felt cheated since you paid full price for that. Uh, for that. Yeah, I paid, yeah, one cent. Yeah, and then the fake oh. name that I got my next box under was also one cent. <laughs> think of you how many think, like you've participated in this scam too i well, think of how many young teenagers in the 70s could have got arrested for stealing oh my god cows. yeah seriously uh, but they didn't enforce it so you know it was a victimless crime uh, yeah but n to, no but the, actually no it's not a victimless crime because you do not take out didax and narpets and put it on side one no that's really a weird. crime Oh, it confused the hell out of me. The hell yeah, out of me. Yeah. Listen to the album the correct in the correct order. Right. Uh, it was like mind blown. Yeah, when you well, heard it in the right order, you now. were probably like, "Oh, okay, that's what they meant." <laughs> yeah, but yeah, this. I I mean, I get that they were like, if one side of the tape is much longer than the other one, then oh, oh, we've lost money, and we need to make it so we're not using quite as much tape. Yeah, but, but they like, they really like in the middle of fountain of Meth. The, the fountain yeah, of Meth. Yeah, you can't you they, can't do that. Yeah. They, they threw. I think I'm going. Did they bald put? I think I'm going bald in the middle. Of the, are you serious? Yeah, I don't. Oh my, mind blown. It's really mind weird. blown. Terrible decision. Yep. Ed, yeah. what's your favorite Rush song? Pick uh, one. Twenty one twelve. Just the song twenty one twelve. That's oh, your favorite. Yeah. Easy. Xanadu is a close second. I love Xanadu as well. That's my jam definitely what's your that. what's your favorite live album um i i admit i'm not a huge 
live album guy, but oh. probably all the world. No, wait, no, as a stage lot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't listen to a lot of live albums. Um, not just Rush, just anyone. Um, it just never, they just never do much for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it's not really live if you're listening to a recording. Interesting oh, that, oh, that you should say that. Uh, we were discussing that with our previous guest. I yeah. love seeing I love seeing live bands. Yeah, right. Live music. We're just listening to a live right. album. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good listening point. Listening to a live album to me. I, yeah, it just doesn't do it for me. I know a lot of people love it. And you know, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, Ed Stanger, thank you so much for being on Two Guys Talking Russian. Uh, you know, you've uh, like I like I said, and I'll say it again, uh, you've contributed so much uh, uh, and enriched uh our, our body of knowledge on the band and um you know we i know there's so many rush fans that uh that uh, appreciate you and who listen to this podcast and can relate with what i'm saying so um you know i just want to thank you and it's really finally it's it's to yeah. see and talk to you i feel like i've like i said i've known you for years but i really haven't talked to you or or been in a, a zoom room with each other right yeah but i'm sure we'll meet at yeah. a rush rush con do you go to rush cons someday I, yeah. I haven't. Wow, yeah. I went to the uh, 06 and 07 yeah. Rush Cons, and then um, in 2015, uh, when they had their one, they had like you know one in Toronto, one in LA. I yeah. went to the one in Toronto. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ed Stanger, uh, thank you for joining us on Two Guys yes. Talking Rush. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I right appreciate on. it. All right, Dan. There it is, Ed Stanger, man. I got to say, it must, it must be a massive effort to collect all that data uh, and, you know, put it out there. And you got to be really dedicated to have a Rush blog like that, man. Well, and I mean, he's, he's like one of the first people uh, to, you know, to even go like, okay, here's Rush, here's the internet, let's make that happen. And, you know, and he did it at a time when people did not have easy access to it like we have now. Um but you know, I mean, he's he's you know he's kind of like royalty now in a lot of ways, and uh, I was I was really happy that we were able to talk to him. I really admire him, and I really admire what he's done. Yeah, yeah. I even mentioned to him that he was a pioneer. Yeah, he is. That's that's correct. Yeah, him I and um, I, yeah. The it's there's twenty one twelve dot net. There's yeah. rushesaband dot com. Yeah. You know, the, there's a couple like that who have been with us forever and who what you know we stand on the shoulders of giants kind of a thing yep. and he he's absolutely up there and he was doing it when it was not easy to do it i think ed's probably up there with the number rush's number one fan if you were to have a list of notable listen every rush fan is the number one rush fan right yeah but then there are notable fans that people mm -hmm. meaning like people fans that are known to be rush fans because listen, there some people don't want to be known and are Rush fans. I'm right. sure there are bigger Rush fans than I am. Uh, but Ed is Ed's in that in that show on that short list of just notable, dedicated Rush fans who's really I don't think we I don't as a Rush community I don't think we thank Ed enough. Not nearly for what enough. he's done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's major, and I mean he's he also like I think sort of has served as a template for I, I think rush fans have wanted to do something more than just listen to music they want to take how they feel about it and their emotions about it and put it into something and make something of their own out of it and you know he really lit the way for a lot of people by doing what he did i respect the hell out of him for doing that and i i imagine he took a lot of shit for it at first too yeah but here he is now and the undisputed champion yeah. yeah i'm sure there's people like maybe like his wife that didn't understand <laughs> like what are you doing spending all that time on rush you know like uh, uh, yeah i mean maybe not maybe it's, i think you know i'm sure his wife is accepting of it it's it's what he likes to do but there are people out there that just don't get it you know at all yeah. not even a little bit yeah, yeah. and they, and they don't understand like the granular fanaticism about every single detail that we all yeah. have you know yeah. uh I just I can't think of many bands uh, where people feel that way about them. This is this yeah. is like one of the only ones I can think of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ed Stanger is a is a is a gift to every Rush fan, and we should all mm -hmm. thank him for that. And thank you, Ed, for coming on to Two Guys yeah. Talking Rush. Well, there it is, folks. Another incredible episode of Two Guys Talking Rush. My name's John Kane. 
I am the delightful Dan Bucks fan. And thank you again for tuning in to Two Guys Talking Rush. What can I say, folks? Rush! Rush! Rules! Two guys are talking, rush two, 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 two guys, two guys are talking, rush two, two guys are talking, rush two, two guys are talking, rush two, two guys are talking, rush, 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 two guys.